The wait is over, Apple intelligence is here. Apple is so big that they are going to take the name AI itself. Your messages, email, photos, calendar, image generation, it's coming for everything. And a partnership with OpenAI to bring ChatGPT to every iPhone user for free. Apple intelligence is here. Tim Cook took the stage at WWDC and announced it. I would call this a massive overhaul of the entire Apple ecosystem. This feels like something we don't see very often. Introducing Apple intelligence, the new personal intelligence system that makes your most personal products even more useful and delightful. Everybody assumed Apple was doing what Apple traditionally does, which is laying back in the cut, long filtered cigarette, watching the industry shake out, watch Gemini make a bunch of mistakes for Google, watch other AI models spill private information all over the net. They just hung back. They played their jazz. This feels like AI for stuff you actually use, right? They had a bunch of demos, a ton of promises for the future. We will get through all of them because there was a lot. At the very end though, Gavin, they had a, a title card that said AI for the rest of us. And I think that is it right there. The first big thing, Kev, we should talk about is the updates to Siri. You and I have bitched a lot about Siri over the course of the yep. last probably five years. It, did, it really does very little. Siri will be able to do more now, which is pretty exciting. Siri, 1.5 billion requests a day, according to Apple. And 1.4 billion of them are users like me and you shouting, no, stop, you're an idiot. You're not as good as ChatGPT. Figure it out. Not true. Don't search not the true. web. I stopped, I stopped shouting back at Siri a long time ago, and I only now use it for reminders, which is a really lame use case for a voice right. app. So first of all, there's a really cool light that will pop up around the phone when you're using Siri, which is just a real nice visual touch. But first and foremost, it will figure out follow-ups and context, meaning that if you ask it a question, you can then ask it a follow-up question, and it will know that that exists in the same question from before. They did a very basic demo of asking for the weather in a certain area, which is something Siri can pretty much do now. But the difference here is that the presenter stumbled over the location and it intelligently caught, oh, they actually yeah. meant the second location that they mentioned. But then they followed up with, remind me to plan a hike there. And it remembers, oh, we are talking about this thing. I haven't completely forgotten what was just said. I am not a dog with a squirrel or a dangling pair of keys. You meant a hike in this area. Okay, tiny little thing that should have been in Siri, honestly, years ago. So glad that it's finally coming. Supposedly, not right away, but it's gonna have on-screen awareness, which is a very big AI thing that people have talked about for a while, that on your phone, it will know what is on your screen. The other giant thing that I'm excited about, Kev, is the idea of in-app actions. So right now, they're saying there are hundreds of them within the Apple apps already, but even bigger, they are going to open this up to third-party developers because there is nothing that I want more to than to just be able to say things to Siri and have it do it. I would love to be able to say to Siri, open Spotify and add that song to my playlist if I hear a song that I like. Hey, send this song to my friend or message yeah, it to this group exactly. with an interesting piece of cover art that is all four of us looking like Pixar characters shirtless on the beach. Very specific request. But it yes. could theoretically do it. This is app intense that you're talking about. This is an SDK for developers because this is a conference for developers. And yep. this will allow them to tap into Apple intelligence without exposing, theoretically, all of your personal data across all of the things, which we will get to the privacy in a second. The other yeah. thing that Siri can do now is it understands your personal context, meaning that it can read your messages it can see stuff in your emails. It can understand all the stuff about you. So you can ask it specific questions like, hey, can you read me this email from Bob, right? And it will know which Bob, or it might know which Bob because there's all the Bob ones that come up, or it'll ask yeah. you which what Bob What time do you mean. does my mistress arrive? It will go and crawl through the itinerary. That's your problem. And pull That's out your the flight problem. information. Not my problem. And yeah, yes, do you exactly. know how many yes. inboxes I have to search through? It is a big problem. You must. So now yes, it will know yes. exactly which one I am talking about because of context, Gavin. Yeah. You, I love that they had a couple demos where they would say, find me photos of insert person here, wearing yeah. insert item of clothing here, and insert specific location here. Like this is a multi-threaded yes. request and it would go through, it could even search through video content all locally on your phone. How many times have you been in a social situation where, and maybe you're the person doing this or someone across from you is like, oh, I got to show you the, the photo from the trip. We went to the cheese factory. Oh, hold, hold on. on. I gotta, hold on. Let me search. Yeah. Let me go. I don't yeah. know. That's uh. I'll yeah, just, yeah. Siri, cheese. 
Siri, yes. search cheese. And that'll be great, by the way. I think the whole thing with this is like, how do you do less crap like that, right? How do you spend less time doing that stuff? So mm -hmm. the other thing that, speaking of all this, another big part of what they announced were uh, system-wide new writing tools. So, you know, sorry, Grammarly, sorry, other companies that are doing this. Apple has needed this for a very long time. And Google has been rolling out a version of this in some form or other for better or for worse. All of this, by the way, is announced. It is not in practice, but they're promising the idea that it will help you reply and rewrite tones of an email. They had a thing which said like, you can reply with a friendly, professional or concise tone, which is something that we have seen in Grammarly and a bunch of things like that before. There's a summary of group chats with AI, which is really interesting to me. So that if you miss out on a bunch of group chat updates, you can get a summary rather than have to scroll all the way back through your group chat. Sure. Summarize all the things, even Safari web pages or news articles yes. that you're reading. That on device, some, we know AI can summarize very well. I don't think you can overstate the impact that this has when this is system wide across every yes. device. That means you're not yes. downloading and installing a writing assistant on your phone, on your desktop, on your laptop, on your iPad. It's built right in. So whether you're writing an email in the official mail client or you're on X and posting to socials, anytime there is a text input field, you can summon the AI on your device to have it rewrite, change the tone, summarize, etc. That is so powerful because again, this is grandmama interfacing with AI to make her Facebook a little less racist without knowing that she's using AI. You say grandmama, and I think I understand it will be grandmama, but it is also 80% of iPhone us. users. It's the rest of us, but the rest of us is a lot of people, right? Like yes. we are not in the rest of us. We are The rest of us is really my wife, my daughters. It's all these people who don't spend or care about the fact that I care about AI. It's, it's the rest of the world, and that's the thing that's kind of crazy. Another big update they laid out was that they are going to generative images, which is interesting. I didn't think they would do this, Kevin. This was kind of a surprise. There's going to be a, a thing called the Image Playground, which is going to be generated on device, and you type a description, and you can then add it to your playground, which allows you to create images from AI, which we don't know what the data sets are. You and I were both texting back. We don't know what they're pulling from to do this. They didn't talk about that at all, but... In another way that they've blown up a bunch of startups, they are going to allow you to take your pictures, your photos, and make cute little images of you, whether it's like you going to the doctor's office and you kind of have a sad face with a doctor helmet on, or doctor helmet is something that I'm going to make happen in the world. Or it's like that's American writing healthcare. It. The doctor puts yeah, on a exactly. helmet and just slams it in exactly. your head. Exactly. But it's a really cool use case of AI, especially generative image technology. And I think, again, it's all about like now it has access to the stuff that you want. It has access to your pictures. You can right. make a goofy picture of Rob, your buddy or whatever, and have him doing something funny. Probably not doing something that's too lascivious, Kevin. Probably not doing something that features a famous person. There's going to be a lot, a lot of, rules of people on this accidentally AI. sit into lasagna and a lot of people accidentally step on jelly, all right? And that's just something I will be generating for free on device. And you mentioned the Image Playground app because there will be a dedicated app for this. It's the yeah. deep integration within all of the apps that you already have. That is the moat. That is what is impactful. If you're watching this and wondering how does any of this apply to me, it's that you won't have to make a decision to go and use it. It will just be there. So if yes. you're in messages, if you're writing a blog post, if you're on Facebook, if you're in social media, you'll be able to generate these images. And I loved, Gavin, the Apple Pencil integration demos, the ability to circle a sketch that you've made and say, yes. hey, punch this up with AI, or just circle a blank space and say, generate an image that matches these notes. That is going to streamline the creation process for so many people. So tons and tons of stuff showed off. It's very basic image yes. generation. They said they've got an yes. on-device diffusion model running. So they are running their own image gen locally. None of this is like, mind-blowing emoji, but the fact that they have integrated it so deeply in their ecosystem is a little surprising how far along it appears to be. Well, I just want to say something to the thousands of AI influencers that are going to be out there and saying like Apple's behind or whatever, this is lame. The announcement here is not about what the technology is particularly doing on the advanced level. It is about the fact that it is in every Apple device upcoming. And that is the thing that is the shocking thing. Cut and paste is something that everybody uses and it can cross every app when you're on an iPhone. Remember that big deal when Steve Jobs originally announced that and like you could highlight text, cut and bring it over to things. That's what this is, right? This is like the idea that 
AI is now your cut and paste kind of integration. And that is hard to overstate what an impact that will make because everybody will have access to it. And, and maybe even better, Kevin, everybody will have access to generate their own AI emojis. That's right, Kevin, it's Genmojis. We will be able to, again, with probably lots of restrictions, create emojis that have me on a yeah. dinosaur, you in a baby diaper, me as a cowboy shooting a bunch of uh, you know aliens, you uh, in jail somehow. Like these are all things that it's going to be able to do, which is pretty incredible. I'm glad it knows us so well to get those use cases down. We all rolled our eyes at message effects back in the day, yes. and yet and I, everybody I still uses send things. Yeah, with hearts and lasers and yeah. big loud impacts. And so yeah, there's going to be more of those. But Gen Moji is one of those things where like, I, how many times have you needed Santa holding a sack of eggplants? Oh, now lots, you can generate lots, it. Yes, of course. It's a tiny little thing. It is not a groundbreaking, boundary-pushing AI initiative, but it is an intelligent integration of the technology into the everyday workflows that all of us have. So when you say, of course they're going to do photos, instant photo editing, where you can simply draw on something or ask Siri in text to remove something, clean something up, make a photo pop, change the style, there are already apps that do this. Yes, there's already plenty of workflows that are more powerful but putting it in everybody's device, making it free and making it fast, that is still a big deal. So speaking of all of that, let us talk about the trade-off that we are making with that, which is that Apple spent a lot of time in this presentation talking about privacy. And this is something that I think is really important because anytime you're dealing with looking at your own data and, and pulling stuff from things that you own, whether it's photos or messages or anything, you have a right to be concerned about privacy, right? And so Apple has talked about a two-step model here that they're using. Apple intelligence operates on the phone, which is all local. And the idea being that you can um, trust that your data is all locked in there. They did then say, if there are larger requests, which that you might need more, there's going to be a cloud that it will call upon. But it is only going to send the data to that cloud that it needs to send, and it is going to anonymize the data as it goes to the cloud and then back, which is a pretty big deal. And it's something that you haven't heard necessarily from any other company because I think, Kevin, Apple's privacy has been a, a hammering point of Apple's thing for a long time. They own the devices. Their business is not advertising, so they don't need to track you. This feels like a pretty big advantage if they can make it work. They said that they're going to have verifiable third-party security audits, not just on their cloud, but on any application that wants to take advantage of said cloud and get access to your little portion of data that gets sent. That's a pretty bold statement. And what, you're, you're grinning. Do you not believe just, it? Are I mean, listen, about? I just am not fully, I don't know, it's weird. We're in this world where we're just going to trust stuff, right? And like, again, I've said on the show before, I got nothing to hide. There's nothing in here that, that I need to hide. But at some point, there will probably be data leaks of this stuff. I certainly haven't run certain AI apps that promise all sorts of magical functionality that would make our lives easier and make me writing certain things or even remembering notes a lot better. But I don't trust them. I don't know them. They have no track record. They have no history. So the privacy stuff is a big deal to me. It's not necessarily that I have anything to hide. It's just that doesn't mean that I want to broadcast everything or let my data become someone else's gold in their mind, so to speak. So I like the privacy focus. I'm for it. We'll wait and see how it pans out. What I don't get, and we should maybe talk about the open AI yes, of it all. They did talk about a big chat GPT integration. So for requests for Siri that are a bit too much, or if you're staring at a blank page of an email and you want to generate initial thought, then it wants to send the query to chat GPT. So Apple and open AI, the deal is real. We don't know the terms of it just yet, but it does mean all of your Apple devices can integrate with ChatGPT. They said, your integrations aren't logged. Don't worry, they're not paying attention to them. But are they? Or is Apple running their own version of ChatGPT? I doubt that. We should take a step back really quickly. This is a huge deal, the fact that they announced ChatGPT. Apple does not own ChatGPT. They uh, very rarely do this big of a third party integration into anything they do. At the whole press conference, the whole event today was Apple, 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 Apple Photos, Apple Messages, all this stuff. And then at the very end, they bring a relatively new company inside the halls of Apple. And I just think this shows the power of what OpenAI controls right now. 
what this said to me was, okay, OpenAI is now, whether you believe it or not, it's on a pedestal with the Google, Facebook, Amazons of the world. It may not be making that much money, and it definitely isn't at this point. Like, it's, it's hemorrhaging money, but it is being seen by the powers that be at that level. And that is a massive deal for what, what OpenAI is and what ChatGPT is. And I'm sure they're getting a nice wholesale discount on all those requests. But if you think about 1.4 billion Siri requests happening every single day, now not all of those are gonna need to go to OpenAI, but even if a sliver of them need to, that's a lot of tokens being yes. used by Apple devices. So this is going to be a big deal for OpenAI, and you know Apple would not have done this deal unless they were just too far behind to catch up. But again, when you focus so much on the privacy aspect of it all, and you mentioned that some things will go to the Apple cloud, well, now we're going to get some weird mixed messaging of like, is my request going to Apple's verifiably trusted secured cloud, or is it going to OpenAI where I'm told it's not being logged and that it's yes. safe? Yes, it's going to be, a, it's a strange place to be. They also mentioned that they're going to have supports for other models down the line. So Apple's already saying, hey, we're not pot committed to this yeah. one tech. But again, the massive takeaway for everyone is that if you have an iPhone 15 Pro, yes. which is the base model iPhone so far that they've said that this will work with, or you have an Apple device with an M1 chip or greater, soon you will be able to say, hey, what was the location my dealer said he would be at? Those types of requests are going to happen and work across all devices. That's kind of a big deal. That's a big deal. And I also think to be, we cannot understate that fact that there are going to be a lot of upgrades. Uh, I was just telling Kevin earlier, I have an iPhone 13 a Pro and there's been no reason for me to upgrade. And now I will. Every uh, year they say, what's the, what's the motivation? How are they gonna push more phones? What's the new feature? Well, this is it. I have an yeah, iPhone 14. I'm sitting in the exact same camp. I don't necessarily want a 15 but I'm probably gonna be diving into a new device just for these features. All right, everybody, if you were into this, like this video and subscribe down below. Leave us a comment. We always reply on a regular basis and we will see you on Thursday. For the AI for Humans podcast, an even deeper dive into all the stuff that's gonna happen in 45 minutes from now.